Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are live. Um, this is um, SAS Bytes. Um, it brought to you by the people at uh, PDX SAS. Uh, we're actually um, a Portland SAS user group that meets uh, the second Thursday of every month, and that happens to actually be tonight, 6 o'clock at Puppet Labs. So um, if you're in Portland, stop on by for some SAS and some free pizza. Uh, if you're not from Portland, uh, you can actually check out the live stream because we stream it just about like this um, on the event page. So you can check out that as well. Um, check out PDXSAS on Twitter. There's links to the community page and all that. So um, today, what, what SAS Bytes is, uh, and uh, this is kind of a new thing, obviously we're just episode two, is um, just a quick little thing at lunch uh, to share some SAS bits. Uh, to invite a few people in to, to share something that they're interested in. Uh, last week I talked about um, icon fonts and font custom, uh, and it was pretty great, and I think I'd like to try and do this as a regular thing every week. Um, hopefully some other guests speaking once in a while, and uh, we'll kind of go from there and, and see, um, see where it goes. So it should be fun. Just a quick little sass bite on your lunch break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing something. What we're going to talk about today is just uh, mixins. I just want to give a quick introduction into building a mixin, some of the basic components, and some of the things that you can do with mixins. Um, and I know a lot of it's going to be kind of rudimentary, but there's a lot of people that have never even seen this before or um, haven't seen maybe a couple of the features of it. Uh, or maybe uh, people can pop in the Hangout and can tell me something that I missed. So. Um, what I'm going to do is go over just a real simple mix in here and show some of the features of it um, and hopefully not get pinged in IRC way too much. All right. So um, first thing with the mixin um, we're going to show right here is that to, to create one, you start off with the little directive of at mixin. Um, then you give it a name. Um, and then here's where we can have a little fun with um, parameters. Uh, really similar if you come from like a PHP background or a I'm sure a Ruby background, really neat programming background. Um, you're going to see this is pretty much looks like a, a, a function where you can call the function and pass some parameters and then use those parameters as local variables. Um, so this value one, this first thing I'm passing in, um, it doesn't matter if you know if I set a value one somewhere else or you know this this variable is just local to this mixin. You know, or anywhere outside of it, value one is going to be completely different. So we've got scoping going on. Um, you know, all three of these are different uh, parameters passed in, and they're scoped just this mixin. So you can have another mixin that also has value one, and they'll be completely different um, scoped uh, variables. So that's always good. Um, so a couple things you can do with with parameters, as you can see, you can obviously pass in more than one. Uh, just comma delimit 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 each one. Um, you, what you can also do is you can set default values, and that's what this colon is for. So if you want a um, your mixin for the second value to always be you know one m, if we're passing in font sizes, and again, obviously this is really generic. This isn't how you'd actually build one. You'd probably use better names. Um, but if you always want that to be one m unless stated otherwise, then this is how you do it. You would just tack on a one m. Um, same thing with this value three. And you see what we're actually passing in is the string false. Uh, and uh, uh, SAS is really great with being able to use true and false values. So you can actually test those. And that's what we're going to do a little bit later down in this mixin. Um, but what I'm doing is basically just saying that by default, it's false. So unless I tell it to be true, it's, it's going to be false. So let's dive into the mixin. Um, I'm going to use each of value one, value two real quick just to like set my color, set my font value. And you can see what's going to happen here is, um, and let me go ahead, let me just go ahead um, so we can actually see on the right hand side um, what that's going to look like. So um, I can do like my. And I will pass a value of. Remember, there is type muting in G plus Hangouts. Oh, God, that's right. There's type yeah, muting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and let's try include, because I'm actually doing a mix-in. Hey, it showed up. Live demos for the win. 
Um, <laughs> and if you haven't, if you haven't seen this, is Sassmeister. Um, Sassmeister is an awesome little uh, web app for um, being able to throw some SAS in and see the output, um, it and to do it live without having to worry about setting up a DOM structure and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you know, you can do a lot of that in CodePen, but this is great being able to see them side by side and easily bring in other extensions. So, really good demo tool for this. Um, so, with my class, as you can see, I'm going to be uh, including my mix in and passing the color green. So, what happens is it prints out my class, and color of green gets put into where that value one goes. And then you can see the default uh, font size of 1M gets put into here. So, I don't have to tell it, you know, 1M. It'll, if I call this mixin every single time, it's going to um, use that as a default if I don't say anything else. Um, the third one is actually doing something, even though you don't see it showing up here. And you might go, what's this whole kitten thing going on? Um, with this third value, what I'm actually doing is I'm testing the value. And I'm going to do, do something depending on the, uh, the, what that test returns, whether it's true or false. Um, and this could be an entire topic of itself of using uh, conditional statements in SAS. Um, again, just something really awesome about the power of SAS. Uh, what I can do is I can do an if statement, and I can say if value 3. Uh, and again, if you come from a PHP background or anything like that, you can test basically the, the truthiness of a variable. So if the variable is true, it'll return yes. If a variable is false, uh, false, it'll return no. So I don't have to say like if value 3 is equal to true or if value 3 is equal to false. You can just say if value 3, and it'll automatically test it that way. So what this is doing is saying if value 3 is, uh, is true, then I want to extend uh, this other uh, silent class that we've set up here that has a little uh, place kitten going on, because everyone needs a little place kitten in their mixes. Um, otherwise, if it's not true, if it's false, which obviously can only be the other option, then extend something different. Extend this you know, no extend uh, class. Um, so a couple things showing off here. For one, you can test the values coming into a mixin to make the mixin do different stuff, which opens up huge worlds of possibility. You could have you could have the mixin do something completely different depending on what gets sent in for one of those values. You could say, you know, if it's one thing, do these 20 steps. If it's something else, do these other 20 steps. So it could get really powerful in that kind of stuff in, in doing some of these tests. Um, you can also test values. So Say you use some like color functions to test the like uh, the luminos luminosity of a value. You could then do something depending on that luminosity. Uh, you could you know set the color depending on it. Those kind of things. So lots of stuff you can do with these if statements, which is a total conversation for another time. Um, but the other thing you can do, you can see here, is you can actually extend from within within a mixin. Um, I will often do this with a mixin for all of the pieces that don't change. Because um, mixins are great when when you have when you need to call a function when you need to call something and pass in values to to change the output when you have a lot of like um, you know say a lot of styles whether it's where you're it's a font mixin actually is a, is a perfect example so like an icon font I talked about last week um, you know there's a bunch of stuff that never changes you know the the, the font weight and the font style and the, the name of the font, the font family, and those kind of things. Those are all going to be the same every single time you call that mixin. So instead of repeating them over and over again, because the mixin is going to print out everything inside of it, you can use an extend to just automatically extend that class every time you call it. Um, you want to be careful not to overdo this because you can find yourself doing a lot, you know, just extending a class like crazy. Um, but it certainly will cut down your code if you've got you know five, six, seven, ten different um, styles on this mixin that never change, that don't, that are not affected by the values passed in, because uh, those are obviously better suited for a um, uh, suited for an extent. And Snugug is saying hi. Okay, so um, uh, so yeah, that so that's it. So we're able to pass some values in, and depending on um, those parameters, it spits out something different. So let me do something a little bit different. Let me go ahead and do my other class. King like crazy. Um, to do other class. So I can do a different class. Use this uh, mix it again. But this time, I'm going to pass in a value for the size. So this one's actually going to be a little bit bigger. So it's going to be green. And actually, let me go ahead and change it to blue. So it's going to have a background color of blue. And this one's going to have a font size of 2. So you see, I, I don't have to pass in that uh, value if I don't want to. 
But if I do, I can totally do it. Um, and then as well with that third value, um, instead of false, if I actually want to be, I can pass that in. And so what it's going to do is this with my other class, it's going to extend the other background. So you can see up on the right here that my other class is going to actually use the kitten. So we got cats from my other class. For my class background, no kittens. So no kittens were harmed in the making of, of this mixer. Um, one thing to be aware of is once you do, and I'm, I, I would want to probably test this to, to, to say definitively, but I know I run across this. Um, this obviously is going to be weird because it's going to think that second value is actually value two. Um, and so once you start setting some defaults, um, you're I'm trying to remember what the other thing. I know I've run into some issues. Basically, once you start setting some defaults, you need to specify those if they're going to change. So um, make sure that you are including all those values. Even if you want it to be 1M, you're going to need to do that. And actually, if, if you're going to use that third value, you need to specify that second value. Okay, that was, that was actually the note I gave myself over inside of the Hangouts chat was this exact subject. Um, if we what? just so, want... No, can't do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if we want uh, if we want to set say the third value but use all of the defaults the defaults up to that point, we're stuck defining all of those values. I believe so. Someone wants to ping me okay. on on if that if there's a different way to do it, there might be. Um, I thought I seriously thought you could like actually say um, like Valkyrie. But I, I guess I'm wrong, because that's certainly not coming up as a... Oh, no, hold on. No, yeah, you should be able to set the keyword argument. I just, I just did it right there. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So my other class is true. Oh! Other class is one of, okay, cool. So we just we just learned something today. So yeah, you can use the, if you can use the keyword to hit one of those ones further down. Oh! Yeah. Is, that, is, that some, is that what we sort of inherit from Ruby, Ruby awesomeness there? Because that's, I mean, PHP, we can't do that. I mean, that's, you know, that's where I come from, right? So... Uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's probably a uh, Ruby thing. We'd have to get, you know, Epstein in here or something like that. Gotcha. Sure. But gotcha. fact is, it works. That's what I love about Sassmeister. You actually that's killer. What works and when it breaks. Um, yeah. So that's the basics of being able to pass in variables, to give them defaults, um, to be able to test those um, uh, parameters. Sorry, test those parameters and do things depending on those parameters. Uh, you can extend from within there. Um, you could probably be able to do a mix-in from within a mix-in, but that just gets inception-y, and I, I don't really want to go there. But <laughs> there's, there's a lot you can do. Uh, and there's one more thing. Here's your little bonus, and hopefully I'm not stealing too much from Chris, is that um, SAS has this concept of, um, of content. So what we can do is we don't have to just send in a couple of parameters. And actually, this came up when I was doing the font mix-in. Because I wanted to pass in like um, drop shadow value, and I wanted to pass in a like font color value, and pass in like all these different parameters of all the different things I might want to do to this icon font every time I use it. Um, but instead of doing that, what we can actually do is this. Uh, what do I want to do? I got colors and font sizes. Uh, let's just do a. Uh, all right, so we can so we can pass content into the mixin, um, and so it's yelling at me because I haven't done this part yet. So a couple things you can do: you can just toss content, that and boom. What this is going to do is anything you pass into the mixin, it's just going to be passed right into this content variable. So if I've got you know whatever the next one is. Um, um, Passing those two quick, things, then they can do that. Quick Good. question about the yeah. semicolon and your closing bracket. First of all, indent your closing bracket backwards because my OCD is kicking in really oh, hard. No doubt. Second of all, do we need a semicolon at the end of that closing bracket? Find out. Maybe not. That might be an, a, an optional one. If it doesn't oh, break, you're okay. Good. Great. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because without it. Um, nor, if you're not doing the content bot block, you, you obviously are going to want one right here. But with the content, I should have deleted that. So good call. All right, so this is cool. If you put something after that, you're going to need the, the semicolon. If you put another rule after your include, 
Uh, let's find out. So, um, no, 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 that's fine. That. I'm wrong. No, I'm going to go now. All right, so you don't need to do that. So, okay, obviously at this point, that's boring. There, there's no reason for me to put box shadow and, and that border bottom inside of my include because it just gets put, you know, I could, I could have just put that afterwards and it would have done the same thing. Um, cool, though, is that you can do different stuff with this content. You don't have to just do it as is. And, um, I could say um, that whatever this item is, it's got... Um, There's oftentimes a link inside of it or something. I don't care. Um, what you can do is actually change where that content goes inside of your mixin. So it doesn't have to be placed just to that parent class. You could say, I want all of the you know, anchor tags inside of this to be whatever I pass into this content box. Uh, really, actually, the more common case, and this, I'll probably show this one, IE or something like that. So if you're using um, HTML5 boilerplate or something of you know anything that that puts all those little conditional tags up in your HTML. Um, this is awesome. Um, what it allows you to do is use that content block and just prefix it with some kind of other class or something like that. Um, and you could even pass that in as value if you wanted to. Um, and we use this often in like media query mixins um, where we want to scope the um, the content that's being passed in. So what what we might do is the the content automatically gets put in the media query, but then we also have an option to put that content inside of some kind of scope. Uh, that scope might be like an old IE, or it might be like, um, you know, I want this to happen at a certain breakpoint, but I also want it to happen in, uh, you know, if I'm in the sidebar or if I'm in the main content or something like that. So it allows us to, to scope things like that, if that's the, the right word. I can do that. And uh, I might need to do a period for it not to break. I certainly did not do this before. Uh, so var. Yeah, it's not going to like me. Any idea what I'm missing there? Do I need different quotes? Or not pass in a period? Anyway, that might not, not be the best example. Bump, bump. There we yeah, something like that. Anyway, might be the, be the best thing just to just throw it in there in live demo. But um, so what it allows you to do is scope that content. So if you need to use it in different ways, put it in different places um, with the with the font icon. What it's able to do is put the font icon, the content that was using uh, like a, an after pseudo class. I was able to do uh, you know after. Um, to, to put everything into that, that pseudo, sorry, that pseudo element to do that after. So anything I passed into that icon font mixin got put into that selector's, you know, after statement. So it would actually style those icon fonts because that's where the icon fonts went. So that's content. It allows you to basically play with and manipulate and do all those types of things. So um, sweet, that's 1220. Um, any quick questions, um, things that didn't make sense? All silent as church mice. That's pretty awesome. Cool. So that's a SAS bite. Um, thanks for everyone that popped by <laughs> late, oh. early. Ooh, Inception. Sorry. Hi, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hope to do that every week. I mean, it's it's lunchtime. Uh, we're gonna eat some food. Want to eat a little bit of SAS too. Um, Eleven people viewing. That's awesome. Uh, we're gonna do it again next week. So um, follow PDX SAS on Twitter. Um, I'll certainly be posting there. Um, in the profile, there's a link to our G Plus community. You can join that. You certainly don't have to live in Portland to join the community. Um, and we're hoping to get, you know, I, I don't want to do this every week as much as I would. Uh, I think Dale's actually in line to do it pretty soon. Um, and if anyone else is available at 12 uh, PM Pacific time on Thursdays, um, I'd love to have you talk and just, just share something cool. Doesn't have to be super scripted, um, kind of off the cuff, and uh, just a little discussion. So um, that's it. I will hit everyone up later. Um, and thanks for watching. Good work, right, thanks, man. Thanks, my guy. Okay. Thanks, guys. See ya. Later.